cold. <laughs> it's chilly. All right. I don't know if you want well, to talk a little bit about yeah, this. Yeah, well, thanks, and... everybody, for coming out. It's a little chillier this week than it was last week. But you can see we've got a nice big chunk of sword here. This is a pumpkin swordfish. So a little bit different than your standard swordfish in that it has this really nice, beautiful sort of pumpkin-colored flesh, which is really just uh, due to what it eats. Um, it's just kind of a difference in diet. Uh, this eats a lot of the royal red shrimp, which helps turn that, that flesh orange. Um, in terms of flavor, it's not too different than regular swordfish. Um, but it's just a really beautiful, beautiful chunk of fish. Just smoothly right through. He's done that before. Well, I remember the, the fins on that tuna. Really oh, they are incredibly oh. thick. I actually use a saw for it in production. I didn't want to bring one over though. There we go. So they have a really big spine and you can go right through it really easily if you know exactly where to cut. That's for sure to work. <laughs> At this point, I could probably be a fish chiropractor. I'm sure I've got enough practical hours in. Alright. So here you can really start to see that wonderful orange color. Typical swordfish, uh, you know, it's got similar qualities, but it's a tan, a little duller than this. These guys come out with this beautiful one. That's the bloodline. Uh, so that's kind of the vasculatory system for the fish. That's where the blood oh. actually travels through the fish. Yeah, no real veins in most fish. The blood travels directly through the meat and the nutrient pick up directly through the muscle. Fascinating. Yep. Yep. On some fish, that's what can give kind of that fishy flavor through it. So sometimes for certain species, you'll get the bloodline cut out like with the tuna. Generally, we cut the bloodline off of that because it's a little minerally, a little gamey. Some people like it, like this guy here. Uh, it is good. It is edible. You know, um, I'm going to leave it basically in the swordfish here. I'm also going to leave the skin on for these um, just because I'm going to throw it on the grill. It'll help keep it intact. I'm just going to rub it down with a little bit of oil. steaky fish so it works really well for dry rubs things like that or just doing straight up in the grill high heat is generally kind of a really good way to go with this you want to go back to that warm office hmm? how uh, what temperature do you need to be inside to or 
Just like most fish, you want to go to like 145. Okay. So yeah, like a, a good medium. Sure. Kind of crispy on the outside, a little yeah. sour maybe. Yeah. Okay. It is the kind of fish you want to cook through. Yeah. Again, you really do want to cook it to the 145, sure. you know. Um, swordfish is definitely one of those that is not good for sashimi or sushi, yeah. anything like that. Wouldn't want to scare you away from ever eating swordfish. No, it's delicious. I just know, you know, some fish you can but, be raw, some yeah. you cook. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely a cooker. Cool. What's well, nice is, you know, you cut a nice thick steak and then you can hit it with a lot of good seasoning. Nice. Yeah, it's really nice for that. Ooh, that one's pretty good. on you can take some of this into the sword and stuff. Yeah. I'd love to talk some more about swordfish. Anybody else got some questions on that guy? You may have said, no? but where did this come from? Where specifically is this guy out of? Do you remember? This swordfish? Mm -hmm. I believe this was South Atlantic. Okay. Uh, so kind of near the Florida area. All right. Well, I thought this one came out of Hawaii. Uh, but they come from both. They do. Yeah, they do. Yep. They'll come from almost around the world. They're a far, you know, distance traveling fish. They don't typically leave their birth region by more than a few hundred miles. Do they, they net them or do they, do they hmm? hook them? How do they they do these all sorts of ways. This one would be a hook and line fish. Like a, a, a not, not a rod though, like a long line? I mean, you could catch this on a rod if you were a very large fish. <laughs> 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 yeah. You can take all of them. You can take all of them. They don't really net well. They destroy nets quite quickly. But they will also harpoon. So, give me this one. While we're hanging out, I got a couple other fish here I thought we'd cut up today. This doesn't take very long. That's yeah. not very <laughs> To me. <laughs> so, brought some other friends. This one is a king mackerel, king fish. 
Uh, it's going to be one of the stronger flavored fish, <coughs> which are my personal favorites. Uh, like the tuna, it is a fast swimming fish. You can see it just, it's a bullet shape, really lends it to speed. It's really aggressive, loves to destroy lures and lines, and tastes amazing. Anybody like sardines? <laughs> Put some hands up. That's the good stuff. So my line last week when you brought up tuna, I said holy mackerel. You were talking about this. <laughs> Well, we have a couple different outlets. We are actually working on a digester program where it's all digested into a liquid that can be fertilized. Um, there are other farms that will take some of what we produce, like pig farms, chicken farms. We have worked with a mink producer in the past and they'll feed them to the mink. The thing is, we produce way more than any farm here can manage. So we're always looking for new answers. I don't know if it's like a pet food or something. <laughs> uh, you know, pet food producers have produced us in the past, but their requirements um, as far as separation, labeling, ingredient lists are too onerous to go through during a production process. And you can't just package it for pets here? N no, absolutely not. I'm willing to get into those lawsuits. <laughs> What's our fish looking, Kim? It's coming along. Not the world's most high power drill. Understood. We'll make it work. <laughs> we'll make it work. <laughs> oh, yeah, I for sure would not have a mackerel or a tuna flavored fish out here in 80 degree weather for more than a couple minutes. Out. Well, these are, you know, really temperature sensitive. You have anybody who's even remotely allergic to And they're dealing with the mackerel or tuna as the temp rises, that histamine grows. Huh. But oh, I've got a I need kind of, a kingfish. Is this is a kingfish. This is the one I've actually been looking forward to all day. That is the yellow tailed jack. You could also hear that called the machi. Uh, this is a wild one, I believe, from Mexico. Just made it in this morning. And I kind of want some for dinner. So. <laughs> Thank you. 
My spectators on the other side. <laughs> oh, look at this, they didn't cut this one first. Uh oh, man down. Frozen tail makes for tough cleanup. Yeah. <laughs> what fresh fish. This is super fresh. Even just the color of the red, you can see is yeah. still that nice arterial red. Up. Right? I wish it would. It's actually not as hot as you'd think. And this is not exactly a super strong grill. So, if we buy, like, we're gonna buy a couple steaks, we'll probably just put it on uh, broil and. Yeah, that'd be great. That's how I do most of my fish anyway. Yep. Yeah. Can I, like, I generally like to do swordfish pretty high heat. Yep. You know, get that outside nice and. Yeah. Frosted and the inside just kind of cooked through. Now, does your rub have some sugar in it to like give a caramelization? Some of these will. Um, I think this one probably does. Okay. Is that all? Yeah, this is. one's got this one's brown sugar, so that's like a blackened swordfish. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I don't know about this one though. Oh yeah, this one's got brown sugar too. I haven't used that one. It's pretty good. It's got a good heat. They call it a dry hot sauce or something like that. Sure. We just bought a bunch of uh, Japanese seven spice with us. So. Nice. That'd be great. I'll probably throw some sugar in that. Like brown yeah, sugar. Yeah, not a bad idea. If it doesn't have a lot of sugar in it, right. add a little bit more just to make it classic, nice. like whatever main brand that is, you know, the yep. fancy little red and oh, yeah, yellow yeah. top or whatever. Yep, yep. Dinner. Don't buy all of this inside. You know, typically I would say yes. With the, the wild species, typically I say yes. So they, they do farm a lot of They are French. And they'll go and they'll net up a bunch of wild Almost there. All right. 
crazy. <laughs> well, we're almost done. Let's get into this guy, finish it up. Some countries, Russia in particular, where these spinal jellies from this and sturgeon are saved, oh, right. fried, and then made into soups. I'm not sure. uh, so I always pick them out. They used to have Russian customers that wanted it all the time. <laughs> if somebody requests it, please do that. I will. Asking for Russian friends. So. <laughs> I absolutely. Is it, is it easier to just give them kind of like a small? They would have to, you know, essentially take this whole thing and, and there's only a bit in the swordfish yeah. in between each vertebra. So it's state of the chapter. They'd have to, yeah, go through all of it. In the sturgeon, that one is actually one continuous line Got it. through the center, so it's easier to get it. I forgot the name, name of it. Okay. I've had it. It's good. It's not dissimilar to like a tendon in a club, yep. something like that. seasoning on there. back in and might not get a chance to get a bite. <laughs> Save some for the chef. <laughs> Whew. That's warm. <laughs> all right, check my work before I serve all of you. Make sure it's, uh, it's good. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. It's awful, you don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's like mom eating my uh, yeah, Halloween <laughs> candy. <laughs> That's the mom pass. That's a different, oh, oh. <laughs> different sampling system. See how I stole <laughs> this check <laughs> for poison? Right. <laughs> I don't know what anybody would do with it if you want it. <laughs> Come say so now. <laughs> Come on up, we're gonna try. Pardon? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Why don't you keep this it just in the cord too? Yep. Since we're talking about it too, I would take that home myself and you couldn't have it, but <laughs> <laughs> is it just because it's like you got a little bit like a bloodline like blood like blood like blood like blood like blood yeah. You want the honest answer? It's that the belly has a higher chance of caring. Yeah, it sounds right. Oh, I don't want it. Got it. <laughs> 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 hey, thanks, guys. Yeah. Great weekend. So, that one out there is the one with the creature comfort so rub. Wow. And then this one here. Is the rub with love. I prefer the love. Is it just more? It's stronger, it's got a higher mineral flavor. Okay. Yeah. You taste the fish? Definitely taste the fish. You can get it, right? Yeah. Everyone always gets it. Yeah, I agree. On the tuna as well, it's my favorite part. It actually tastes like that fish. Right. <laughs> Definitely a little more in your face, which I can see why some people wouldn't want it. But that's a okay. um, because I had it. <laughs> it's a high heat oil. Oh, okay. uh, so if you were doing this, you'd want to use like vegetable oil. Here, let's show. Let's show Facebook. This is what you're missing by not being here. Oh. <laughs> but you are warm. Yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, for doing this kind of grilling, for sure, like, again, I want nice high heat. I want good char. So I'm looking to do some kind of high heat oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, okay. grapeseed oil. oil. Yep, yep, yep. Grape seed is a great choice. Honestly, that's the one. Okay. Which ones are those seasoned with? So that one's the rub with love, uh, the smoky barbecue smoky rub. Smoky barbecue. Oh, okay. What was the first one? That was the Creature Comfort. Oh, Creature like Comfort's that. a local really hot sauce brand. This one is that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Might as well. Thanks everybody for watching. We will keep this video live and probably post it to YouTube. Thank you.